I'm Anthony Co-Francesco from Data Dive, and this is Office Hours. In this video, I'll be walking through everything you need to know about the enterprise tools inside of Data Dive and how you can implement them into your organization. Let's go. Today, we're walking through the enterprise tools in Data Dive. We're going to give you a full breakdown, and then we're going to open it up for Q&A. So welcome, everyone. Uh, Let's jump into it. So if you're new to office hours, I think there's a few people that actually came from the mastermind. Uh, and so if it's your first time, number one thing is calls are recorded. We have a huge backlog of, uh, of video content. You're going to see some new uh, videos that are coming to the Data Dive channel. You're going to see them inside of the app. If you've noticed, we've added a button, which is our getting started guide. And so, uh, yeah, you'll start to see those soon. But I guess the note here is that Everyone who joins Office Hours Lives gets the information soonest. Uh, we got to make priorities in terms of what we can edit, like what we can't edit. And so uh, basically what I'll say is that we're going to, you know, we try to say everything's going to get uploaded in a week, but now we're just saying it's going to be two weeks later and uh, it's going to incentivize everyone to join the live class or they can just wait and get the information a little later. Thing number two that I like to say is I know a lot about Data Dive, but I certainly do not know everything. And so if there's something that I don't know the answer to, or there's a bug that I haven't seen before, um, you know, I'll, I'll, let, I'll let everyone know there. And then last but not least is if you need help using Data Dive, we have a really good knowledge base on the website. If you go to the Data Dive website and you go to the top, there's a tab for resources. It links to the YouTube channel, it links to office hours, but it also has the knowledge base. And so also on the website, we have an AI chatbot and the AI chatbot has learned and synthesized all this information. Um, it gets a majority of the questions, right? And we're updating those articles every time. So I think probably a month from now, it's going to be like 90, 95% accurate. So start playing around with that. If you see it doesn't give you a correct response, uh, we'll probably be fixing it very, very soon. So the agenda for today's office hours is I'm going to spend the first 15 minutes or so walking through the enterprise workflow. And then we're going to open it up for q a i don't think because this is a small group uh i don't think we're going to take 40 minutes we're kind of playing around with the notifications inside of data dive and so this week is a little bit light i was testing something different and uh definitely not working so we're going to go back to what we were doing previously so this week is all about enterprise tools and workflow next week is the one you're going to want to mark your calendar for because i'm going to be going through the ai product brief and ai copywriter highly anticipated tools, beta users already have access to this. And then on July 10th, I'm gonna be showing you the keyword rank tracker. This is really powerful. We've been working on this for almost a quarter and a half. So you can either scan the QR code to register or you can go to datadive.tools slash office hours. So this is kind of just uh, the, the releases that are coming out. What we're gonna be talking about right now, of course, is enterprise tools followed by AI and then keyword rank tracker. Now, if you are already in the beta access program, it means that you're in inner circle. And so that's really the only way that you can get into the beta program now. So not everyone has access to these AI features, but the people in the beta program do. So if you're in inner circle and you wanna join the beta program, scan this QR code, uh, or just go to datadive.tools slash beta, and uh, your application is gonna get reviewed and approved likely within 72 hours. So this beta program is first come first serve priority for inner circle subscriptions. Basically, as soon as we opened it up, we we like doubled or tripled the amount of people that we actually needed for the beta group. So if you're interested in getting in, consider joining inner circle. Uh, this isn't uh, an upsell or a way to make more money. Uh, inner circle actually pretty much pays for data dive. So instead of the software being 150 USD a month, it's only 50 USD a month. And so with what you pay to get into Inner Circle, it basically nets out. So you get access to all of the training, all the content. Like I said, we've got a master class on July 12th, and uh, it's going to be really good. You get to go to all those for free instead of having to pay, as well as our events, as well as getting put into the mastermind, getting the training content, getting the beta access and the discount on Data Dive. So if you missed a previous office hour section, definitely go and subscribe to the YouTube channel. You can also go to this URL here. That's basically it. Yeah, we've got, uh, I don't know, eight or nine weeks up. And so I think this week we're going to put out the profits tool or a couple of weeks behind, but all the good information you're going to want to see is there. 
So let's take a few minutes. I'm going to go through this here first on these slides, and then I'm going to go over to the Data Dive app, and I'm going to show you how some of this stuff works in real life. So when it comes to enterprise features, everyone has access to this. At first, they were like, dev team was like, hey, let's just uh, let's just make this for people who have five or more users or enterprise accounts. And we said like, hey, look, we put all this work into this. This is going to benefit everyone, even if they're just single member organizations, it's going to help them get organized. So why don't we make it enterprise for everyone? And they agreed to do that. And so these are tools, you know, action items. I talk about this every week. Go and actually start to use one part of this. Start to organize your niche pipeline so it's not just a long list of products, but it, it has some more meaning. And so how you can start to organize using these enterprise tools, there's two different categorizations that you can use. There's spaces and there, then there's labels. So how you think about spaces is this is a way to categorize and group your product portfolios. So if you have multiple brands, if you have multiple uh, types or groups of products, that's what spaces is going to be for. And then labels is going to primarily be for tracking your workflow, right? Going from researching a product to validating it, to ordering samples, to sourcing, putting the product on Amazon, launch growth, optimization, launch growth, maintenance rather. You know, you'll see it all. So let's first talk about spaces. Uh, basically, your niche pipeline by default is going to be this table view. And uh, if you click on this tab on the left hand side, it's going to show you your spaces. I think by default, it just gives you brands, my brand one, my brand two, my brand three. So this is how you can start to categorize these niches. Um, yeah, so basically, you can put the, uh, I'm sorry, it's just been a long day. So if I'm, I'm a little bit out of it. <laughs> I apologize, but you can put niches into different spaces. You can control who has access. So if you want to only give certain members of your team access to certain brands, right? Maybe you have brand managers that only work specifically on one brand. You can control the access that they see there. Uh, if you want to go and customize these spaces beyond the default, I would highly recommend you do this because my brand one, two, and three won't really mean much to you. You have a couple options for how you can customize these. You can either click learn more or you can go down here to the space management button. Uh, and then so once you do that, you can customize these options. Still inside of this menu, you can see what spaces uh, niche your research is attributed to. And you can also see who in your organization has access to that space. So if you want to customize, let's say this is SSF test dive two, right? If I want to customize what space this is in, I just literally click here, select from the drop down the space that I want to add, click enter, and then data dive is going to save your preferences. So you can, you can select what space your research is in inside of the niche pipeline. You can also customize this inside of the master keyword list. So up here at the top of the page, if this is blank, Click on the little pencil icon and then add your spaces, add the product, add the research to the space. Right? You can also see the access tools, right? who has access to this space by clicking on the uh, share with manage access button. You can also, so this is what I was talking about earlier. right? You can navigate here by either clicking manage spaces or go on the left hand side to space management. And here's where you can customize what your spaces are. Right. So again, by default, you're going to be given a few options. I obviously recommend that you customize these. Very intuitive to use. You just click the trash icon to delete the defaults. You can edit the name of something using the pencil. And if you want to add additional spaces or spaces beneath those spaces, just click on the plus icon. Uh, this is all about space access management. So if you click on space access management, this is just going to take you to this additional menu where again, you can see your different spaces that you have here. If you have a multi-member organization, you can see all of the users in your organization and it's just gonna show you who has access. So you can set the, set the access rights here, right? You can either do use or manage, and then it's gonna show you who has access to what. So for this organization, we've got nine users and everyone has the ability to manage. I uh, just want to give some definitions here. Use means that they can only view the niche. Changing content is not allowed. And manage means that you can change anything in the niche 
you can assign a space, you can change the signee, anything like that. So let's say you're working with a new member on your team. You're not super comfortable with them going in and messing up all of your research, right? Maybe you have to do some more training. You can give them use only access. Let's say you're working with an agency. You want to give them access to all of your research. You don't want to give them access yet to your seller central account. You can give them use access only instead of manage. That way they're not going to be able to tweak the settings. They're not going to be able to change anything inside of the uh, inside of the, the research. So spaces is all about how to categorize your brands. Labels is all about organizing your workflow. And so by default, you're going to be given a handful of different uh, stages for selling on Amazon. I'm going to show you what mine look like a little bit later, but just think critically about what you're doing, right? What your workflow is, whether you might have a separate workflow for launching a product versus products that are already live. I'm going to show you what mine look like inside of the data dive tool, right? So just like on spaces, very intuitive, very easy to use. You can either click the learn more for additional information on labels, or you can click on the manage labels, and then that's going to take you to the management menu. You can also do this from the MKL. I think we show that in a new slide. So keep in mind that labels, these can be applied to any niche and everyone on the team can see and use all labels, right? So it's not like you can restrict access to labels, but you can restrict access to spaces. And the thought behind that is we're thinking, hey, if you have multiple brands in the portfolio, a lot of our enterprise clients say, hey, I only want person XYZ to be able to access a specific brand. Versus labels, right? It's not going to have access right restrictions there. Also important to know is that you can assign and you can assign research to multiple labels, right? So maybe you're in the process of researching a product, but you're also ordering samples simultaneously. You can put both of those tags on at the same time. So if you want to see what this looks like, uh, I would recommend switching from the table to the board view. Uh, but even in the table view here, you got to select manually which areas of your labels you want to have show up. And then it's going to show the labels here. So if you want to go and customize these labels, you just go to the left hand side, you click on label management. And this is what the workflow shows up by default. Again, I recommend, recommend you customize this. I'll show you what mine looks like in just a minute. And just like before, super intuitive to use. You've got the pencil icon, trash icon, and then you've got the plus icon so that you can add additional steps. Now, if you click on the plus icon, you can add sub steps. It pretty much is unlimited. And then this toggle over here on the left-hand side allows you to reposition the order. So you do want to put this in the correct chronological order for how these happen in your business. So just like you could change your categorization on your labels inside of the niche pipeline, you can also do the same thing in your master keyword list. So if you're working this week, if you're working tomorrow, if you're working later today, and you see that this area is blank, start going and adding some products into spaces. Go and customize them first, I would recommend, and then start attributing these. And it's pretty easy to do. Just click on the pencil icon. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this. A lot of this is just for multi-member organizations. But for assignees and team management, it's basically just saying that once you, uh, once you create these labels and spaces that you can assign different people to them, very self-explanatory. Uh, you can see who's assigned. You can change those permissions. You can also see the shared with manage access. You can see that here inside of the master keyword list. Uh, read only niches. I think we talked about this already. So you can create niches that are read only. Then they're only going to be able to see the content. That's just the view only. Uh, the one thing that they can do is they can obviously change the MKL setting parameters. So it's not going to lock out like if they it, it's read only in the sense that you can't make any changes. You can't exclude keywords, right? You can't like change the listing, things like that. But like exclusions and excluding competitors cannot be changed. You can't remove anything, but you can change how the data is shown. So if you want to like, obviously, if you want to filter, if you want to change the relevancy and see a different view of data dive, you can do that. But uh, just like I said, read only user. They can't play around with the listing builder. So if you have a really great title in there, you have a new member on your team and you're like, hey, I want you to go check this out, but you don't want them to change things, read only is the way to do it. So let's talk a little bit about board view. 
by default, your niche pipeline is going to show you just the table view, right? Which is just a list of all your products. The more that I use data dive, the more that I like using the board view because it functions very similarly to other project management tools that you're familiar with, like Trello, Monday, right? All very similar. And so the board view, you can, you, you can switch to the board view by going to your niche pipeline and going and toggling and clicking on the board view. And then by default, the board view is going to be blank. And so what you're going to do is you can decide if you want to view the board by spaces, right? Those are by your brands or by labels, right? That's by your process workflow. And so what you're going to have to do when you start in order to have these show up is you're going to click all of the checkboxes for the spaces or labels that you want to be displayed, right? You can select multiple. And then once you do that, now it's going to show up, right? So we got research, product design, place order, graphic design, et cetera. If a niche has more than one label, it's going to show up in both of those columns, right? And then very simply, if you want to move things between these different stages, you're just going to drag, you're going to drop. Very easy to do, right? Very user-friendly. Uh, you can also modify how you'd like to group items in the board view. So you can group them by brand, right? So now you can see that brand one is on a separate row from brand two. Again, really helpful rather than seeing a long list of, I've got 300 plus niches inside of my research, right? Some of you might have 50, 100, depending on how big your product portfolios are. And so this is another view that I like. That way, I, I like to organize my view by labels so that I can see the workflow, but I, then I can break it down by individual brands. So I really like that as well. Um, yep, all the same there. If you want to move things, probably not going to switch from like brand one to brand two, but if you want to do that, you can. You can just drag around. And then this is the really good pro hack. So remember this, if you're just starting for the first time and you're like, ooh, I want to get this set up. I want to get more organized. Well, then what you should do is click this button here, which set, which is called include unassigned. And then because like I said earlier, this whole thing is going to show up as blank until you start populating, until you start putting research into it. And so if you click on assigned, it's going to show you all of the niches that currently don't have a space or don't have a label. And then all you have to do is you can just drag it into the next column and then you're good to go, right? It's just going to place it there really fast to get through. Yep, that's just filters. I think everyone already knows about how to apply filters. Comments are really straightforward, right? You just click on the comment section anywhere in the uh, data dive platform. You can tag different members of your team. This is for people with multi-member organizations. You can put in screenshots, and then you can track all of that there. Uh, if you tag someone inside a data dive, it will show up as a notification icon. So I would recommend you know, training your team to look out for the notification icon if you're using that feature. And uh, keep in mind, too, that comments are page specific. So if you navigate to an empty page, the comment, is gonna, the comment history is going to be blank. So if I leave someone a comment in the listing builder and they're in the MKL, they're not going to see it. Maybe we'll update that feature over time. Uh, but they are going to see your users are going to see the notification icon if they've been tagged. So just something to keep in mind there. This can be good for if you're actively working on, let's say you're optimizing a listing or cleaning up the MKL, you can kind of adjust your workflow and assign it to someone. And then your process is like, okay, once the MKL is clean, you're going to tag the next person and then they're going to move on to the next phase. All right, audit logs, right? This is just something that we have here. If you want to see all the historical actions that have been taken on your account, you just navigate to the audit logs section on the bottom left-hand side. And here you can see everything that's happened. Um, if you're missing data, you can see if a user has deleted it. That can be really helpful, especially if you're in large organizations, like where the heck did the title go? Well, now you can know who to yell at. I mean, not that you should yell at your team, but I think you get the point. It was a joke. Uh, yeah, so it's just showing you the type, the description, what area of data dive it was in, and then the time and date that that 